In the previous video, we came up with an approximation for the frequency modulated signal that was based on the staircase approximation. We're trying to find the bandwidth for this frequency modulated signal, but what we realized was that that signal is going to be too complex to find the Fourier transform. So we're going to need to do something to break up this signal even further so that we can take the Fourier transform and find the frequency domain information. So let's continue this process by continuing to look just at cell K. So if we look, want to look at just cell K, let's multiply our approximate frequency modulated signal by a rectangular function in time. So if we make a rectangular box that goes from TK to TK plus one over two B, and we multiply them together, we can find a part of the approximate message that contains an interval in cell K, which contains just that constant instantaneous frequency. So we can analyze each cell, which contains only constant instantaneous frequency at TK, or expressed using the carrier frequency, it will look like a, a cosine wave like this. So if we multiply those two together, we're going to get a rectangular box being multiplied by our approximate frequency modulated signal. It's going to give us a signal that looks like the one on the bottom. And it is a signal that is zero everywhere, except for the interval from TK to TK over one plus one over two B, where we're going to have a cosine wave that has a instantaneous frequency that was given by the height of the message based on our step function. So at the very bottom of this, this very bottom rectangular box being multiplied by the cosine wave, now we're finally at an expression that we could take the Fourier transform of. So let's figure out how to take the Fourier transform of this function. Okay, so if we break this up <clears throat> into an expression that looks like this, we now have an expression that we can find a Fourier transform of. So if we look in the textbook, example 3.12, or just anywhere in chapter three, we talked about taking the Fourier transform in time frequency relationships. And we saw that a, a rectangular pulse in the time domain is going to translate into a sync pulse in the frequency domain. So if we want to find the frequency domain information for our rectangular pulse, we know that our rectangular pulse had a width of 1 over 2b. So if we take our rectangular pulse with that width and take the Fourier transform of it, then we will have some uh, frequency domain information for a function gf that looks like this. And that gf has zero crossing points at minus 2b and 2b. So the total width of that main pulse is equal to uh, four times the bandwidth of the original message. And if we convert that into radians, we're going to get something that's slightly different that's given in the, uh, in the box below. So now we have a function, capital G, uh, for the frequency domain information of the sync pulse that corresponds to our time domain box that has a width of one over two B. Now remember that for our approximation, we multiplied a box in the time domain by a cosine with a constant frequency. So we're going to need to now take our rectangular box, which we'll call G of T, and we're going to multiply it by a cosine wave. So to start with, let's consider a cosine that has a constant frequency that's simplified of just omega naught. Remember, ours, ours is based on the carrier frequency plus the constant times the message value. But let's look at this, uh, a simplified version where we have GT is the, the box being multiplied by a cosine wave with a constant frequency. And that's going to give us in the frequency domain uh, two different pulses, one at the positive frequency and one at the negative frequency. And each one of those pulses is going to be at the constant frequency of that cosine wave. So <clears throat> if we look at our, go back to our cell K that we're interested in, what we're gonna call our rectangular box GT, 
and we're going to call our message uh, that we're interested in uh, for the cell K is going to be a cosine with a constant frequency. So you can see where this is going. It's just going to take a little bit because we're going to have to do this for each cell. So if we take GT, our box, multiply it by a cosine wave of a constant frequency, that constant frequency is determined by the cell we're at, then it's going to mean that we're going to have two sync pulses in time that get spread out. So one sync pulse is going to be at the positive frequency, one's at the negative frequency, and they're going to be centered at the carrier frequency plus the constant KF multiplied by the message value at our particular staircase. So if we multiply some uh, cosine wave that lasts for just a duration of 1 over 2b, then we're going to get this two different pulses in the frequency domain. Each pulse is going to have a width of 8 pi b. So let's look at just the positive frequency pulse. In that pulse, we have our rectangular function, the sync function, and it's going to shift. And it's going to shift because we multiplied it in time by a cosine wave at a constant frequency. So it's going to shift in frequency to the frequency of the carrier frequency plus the KF constant multiplied by our message value at our staircase interval. And in the frequency domain, the, this is going to be a sync function. Now, because our sync pulse was shifted, we're going to have to substitute in our constant frequency so that we uh, account for the shift that occurred. So now we have a pulse. So if we look at just the positive frequency, we have a sync pulse that's been shifted to the carrier frequency plus the constant KF multiplied by the message value at our staircase cell. Okay, so each different point on our staircase, we would be able to find the up, uh, sync pulse that corresponds to this. So each one of these places on the staircase is going to correspond to a sync pulse at a slightly different frequency. So if we have the cell K and we have a sync pulse, that's going to occur at the carrier frequency plus some KF constant multiplied by the value of the staircase. That's going to be in the frequency domain here at some value omega C plus KF times M of TK. And we can see that's going to be a little bit higher than the carrier frequency. And if we analyze the entire staircase message approximation, we can see that it's there's going to be pulses that range all the way from the top, so some highest pulse at a value of MP. And that pulse is going to give us some frequency information at the carrier frequency plus the constant times that MP. And so that's going to occur even higher than our original cell K. And then the lowest range of the frequency response is going to be given by the lowest value of the message, so some minus MP. And that's going to give us a sync pulse at the carrier frequency minus the constant times MP. And that's the lowest frequency pulse. So that's going to occur somewhere down there. So now we have a whole range of sync pulses that are given by various places in the message. And they're going to range from the carrier frequency minus the constant times MP to the carrier frequency plus the constant times MP. And so the distance from the lowest pulse to the center, the carrier frequency, where all the pulses are concentrated, the center of all the pulses, that width is going to be KF times MP. And then above that, it's also going to have that same width. So total, the width from the center of the lowest sync pulse to the center of the top sync pulse is going to be 2 times the constant times MP. Now, don't forget that the sync pulse is spread out. So uh, because of that rectangle box in time, it's going to get spread out in frequency. And that spread in frequency means that the, the main part of the sync pulse is going to add on this extra 4 pi b for the bottom frequency and an extra 4 pi b at the top frequency for a total of 8 pi times the bandwidth of the original message that's being added on. 
So now we've finally arrived at a bandwidth approximation for this entire wideband frequency modulated signal that was approximated by the staircase message. And so that whole thing is going to be given as two times the, this uh, amount of the constant times the message, the maximum message value plus four pi b. And that four pi b comes from that spreading of the sync pulse. So this overall approximation in Hertz is given in this box at the very bottom. Now, because we have this approximation in Hertz, and we originally thought that if we had a narrow band signal, the bandwidth was only going to be 2B. <clears throat> and so that was for our narrow band frequency modulated bandwidth approximation. If KF was very, very small, we thought that maybe the bandwidth would be 2B. But we can now see that our staircase approximation is telling us that the actual significant amount of bandwidth could be almost or at least two times larger than the narrow band approximation. And because these sync pulses have a response that goes from minus infinity to infinity, we can also see that theoretically, the staircase approximation is going to have an infinite amount of bandwidth. So let's look at this a little bit closer. And let's go back into frequency domain in Hertz instead of radians. And we can see that there's going to be a number of pulses ranging from the minimum value of the message to the maximum value of the message. And the distance between the uh, lowest frequency pulse and the upper frequency pulse, let's call that two times delta F. And if the message has zero offset, meaning that the maximum value is equal to the negative of the minimum value, then we can say that the distance between these is going to be uh, given by two times that uh, delta frequency. And so from the carrier frequency to the upper pulse is going to be delta F, and from the carrier frequency to the lower pulse would be delta F. Now that means that the total bandwidth could be simplified and written in this way. So two times delta F plus two B hertz. Now remember, when we estimated the original message, we used that staircase method. And that staircase method caused a lot of extra spreading and frequency. That's what gave us these sync pulses. So now that we've analyzed this, we can see that the actual bandwidth of a wideband signal is definitely going to be larger than two times delta F, but it's also probably going to be smaller than two times delta F plus four B. So let's take another look and see what it what it's closer to being. So if KF became very, very small using our staircase approximation, we can see that this two delta F is going to shrink down a lot. And that's going to leave us with these two B bandwidths on either side of the sync pulse from the, the lowest frequency sync pulse and the highest frequency sync pulse. And that's going to give a bandwidth that's almost four times B. Now remember our narrow band frequency estimated bandwidth was two B. Now our staircase method, we're saying uh, in the best case scenario where KF is very small is going to have a bandwidth of four times B. So it seems that the, the staircase method has given us a, a, a very big approximation for the bandwidth. It's twice as large as our narrow band approximation. So let's see if there's a reason for this and let's see if we can come to a compromise between the two.